Can you all hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> this is a technology conference. And one of the things that I have learned, or rather I've been reminded of this afternoon, or rather earlier in, this, uh, in the day, is the fact that Nigeria is a very young country. Another point that was made is that jobs are going to go away because of technology. The question then is, what are we going to do about it? You see, technology, in spite of all that we say about AI, artificial intelligence, cannot on its own create jobs. It's people who are still going to think and use their minds to create jobs. Now, this is a, a, a conference, a meeting about the future. And one of the key things that we are told that is the theme of this thing, of this whole conference, is that the future is now. The future is now. And I ask myself, how can the future be now? Simple. Because ideas are the seeds with which we build a future. Ideas shape future. And it is only people who are willing to think and put their ideas to work that can own the future. You see, each of us here has been granted by the Almighty God ideas. And we are thinking human beings. But you see, you cannot talk about the future if you are not talking about the power of ideas. If you are not talking about the power of ideas, you are not talking about the future. Many people, many civilizations, many communities are stranded in the past. And the reason why they are stranded in the past is because nobody is thinking for them. I'll give you an example. Ivory Coast produces cocoa and makes about, I understand, I hope my figures are, wrong, are right, I understand they make about 3 million or 3 billion, but I suspect it's maybe about three, 3 million dollars from cocoa or something like that. Switzerland does not have cocoa, but it makes about $70 million. I think the figures are wrong, but whatever the figures are, compare three million for the guy who produces cocoa to 70 million for the guys who does, for the guy who does nothing. That is the power of idea. Many of our communities and societies are stranded in the past or stranded in the present because people are not thinking. Your thought life, your thought life determines where you go from here. It determines your future. Thinking is so very important an element that we must we must put it in the equation of things what i have realized is that a lot of people are not 
thinking. They are not thinking. And because they are not thinking, they are not making progress. The kind of progress that they ought to make. Can I have the next slide, please? The next one. Okay. This is a gentleman that you all know. Steve Jobs. For a season, he lost what was a job, a, a company that he created. But soon enough, the, the people who took over the company from him realized that they couldn't go ahead with the company without him. So they invited him back in 1997, I believe it was. When he died a few years ago at 56, the whole world celebrated Steve Jobs. And the reason he was celebrated is because Time Magazine said that Steve Jobs' most outstanding feat was that he had taught an entire company how to think like himself. So in spite of all that we say about the iPhone, the iPad, the iMac, or whatever device he had made, what was central to the success of Steve Jobs was thinking. And the rebirth of, I, uh, of, of, uh, of, the, of the Apple company, the rebirth of the Apple company in 1997 boiled down to two words. When he came in, he instructed everyone to think differently. It was a mantra that went through the entire company, that people had to look for a new way of seeing things, a new way of programming, a new way of marketing, a new way of doing whatever needed to be done. Now, what that did was it moved Apple from a company that was failing, actually had failed for the last several years to a company that became profitable. And Steve Jobs himself said that the way to survive is to innovate your way out. I think it was Voltaire who said that no problem can withstand the assault of sustained thinking. If you are prepared to put the mind that God has given you to work, there is no problem that cannot be solved. Whether that problem is strategic, whether that problem is financial, whether that problem has to do with people, all those problems will find solution when you are ready to put your mind to work or when you are ready to put your mind to work in collaboration with other people. After all, technology is about collaboration. I'll give you one more example. In 1999, Time Magazine put this gentleman, Einstein, at the top of 100 most influential people of the 20th century. And they call him the person of the century. Now, what people forget is that the theory that made Einstein Einstein came about because of what he called a thought experiment. It was a thought experiment. It was, it was uh, what the scientists or researchers called the grand what if. That was the question he was asking himself. It was almost like it was as if the answer to the problem came to him as a revelation. And then he started walking his way back. What I am saying to you this afternoon, the key point is this. If you are going to make progress as a technology specialist, you must put your mind to work. 
you must put your mind to work. Many of us are not putting our minds to work. Einstein, it was, who said that imagination is more important than knowledge. That imagination is more important than knowledge. And he went on to say, knowledge is limited. Many of us have confined ourselves to knowledge. By the way, knowledge is old. Knowledge is old. Why? Because it's old, because it's written, because, because it's, it's, it's per se, it's gone. Somebody already made the point. All you can do is to use what that person has given to you, add it to what you have, and come up with something new. So Einstein says, knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. Knowledge is old. Many of us are stranded in a cul-de-sac right now. Why? Because we are mimicking what others have done. Because we are trying to reproduce what others are doing. We are not thinking outside the box. We are not, we are not coming up with something fresh that is our own. You know, there's a city in the Middle East called Dubai. Dubai is a creation of somebody's knowledge, somebody's, sorry, somebody's thinking. It was a desert village. It was a, it was a, it was a fishing village. Dubai was a fishing village. But today, Dubai is the fourth most visited city in the world. Who did that? Look at, just show me the, yeah, that's it, the next, no, no, the last one. Yes, this one. This was Dubai in 1991. Go to the next one. Look at Dubai today. This was just in the imagination of one man. Listen, without new ideas, whatever talk we are going to talk about technology here this afternoon from this morning is useless. Because you must take the technology that somebody else has developed, knowledge that somebody else has produced, and use it to produce something new, something fresh for this community. You know, we heard uh, of Cynthia, and, and I, I actually said uh, to my friend today, I said, how did she come up with the idea that she must teach math in Igbo? That's what, that's what imagination does. Imagination frees you from English. Imagination frees you from, from, from whatever the colonial masters has placed on our path that makes it difficult for us to progress. And she started teaching in, in Pidgin English and in, 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 the, in the local languages and she's, she's having results. If we put our imagination to work, we will do more than just recycling the past or recycling other people's mental uh, past, because really it is past. I'm looking for, I'm looking for technologies who are going to solve our, our, our transportation problem. You know, there is an Indian guy who, who trained in, in, in America, who started his training, like many of you, started his training in Dubai. Uh, no, no, sorry, in, in Mumbai. And he went to America, to Chicago, to read his master's and, uh, and his uh, first degree, and his final degree. Uh, they call him SK. And today, he's, he's formulating uh, power, power plants from sand. Sand. He's using sand to, to create boxes that can produce energy. That's what imagination does. Please move on. Move on, move on. So, move on. Okay. I know I have talked about ideas, I have talked about thinking, but thinking does not work itself. Thinking must be combined with passion. 
If you are not passionate about what you are about, you are not passionate about what you do, if you are not ready to roll up your sleeve, uh, sleeves and work, your thinking is useless. You know, when we were growing up, it says 10 pence a penny, which means it's cheap, it's everywhere. The ideas that you have been hogging, which you did nothing about, somebody else is going to come up with them tomorrow and act on them and come up with something. Are you surprised that things that occurred to you to do six months ago, you suddenly went somewhere and you found somebody doing it? Thinking alone is not enough. Ideas alone are not enough. There must be someone who is ready to test his ideas. We are here today because a young man put together a team and decided to test his ideas. Tech Points is only three years old. And we are all here. Somebody came from Kenya. Another person flew in from, uh, from Port Harcourt with their baby. Why? Because the Tech Point team had an idea of possibilities and they are putting it to test. They practically slept here last night because they were ready to work their ideas. Are you ready to work your ideas? Ideas must partner with passion. Ideas alone are not enough. If we are going to deliver the future that we want to deliver, mastery. Mastery. In fact, those of you who are in judo and uh, kung fu, you know that kung fu is actually about mastery. If, you, if, you, if you're talking about kung fu, it's about mastery. It's the fact that you, you can use your knowledge to become something that you were not yesterday. And this is the last slide. The future is now. The future is now. Why is the future now? And you're wondering why is uh, Bola Tinumbu there? Bola Tinumbu dreamt of a future many years back. That future is being lived in Lagos today, many years after he left office. If you are going to own the future, you needed to have started yesterday, putting your mind to work, putting your abilities to work. I know many people say, oh, you don't understand, we don't have money, we don't have this. I don't know of any entrepreneur that had a bag of money to start with. Maybe there are few. What they started with is, first of all, an idea they believed in and they were ready to make those ideas work. That is the story of Bola Tinubu. He had ideas about politics. He knew what politics was going to be like. Many of us may not like him. I, I'm not in APC, by the way. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but he had ideas. He decided to take control of the Southwest, and he did for a while until most of it, some of it was taken away from him. But of course, they have not succeeded in taking Lagos. Why? Because he had an idea. And he invested in that idea. Somebody told me a story when they were in Nadeko. They were meeting somewhere in London and trying to raise money to go to Canada to make their case. And they didn't have money. And the only house he had in London, as I was told at that time, he sold it. He invested it in the future. I'm not saying that I like Tinubu's politics. But I'm just using him to illustrate of somebody who had a dream and he knew where he was going. He knew what he was about. He knew what he wanted to achieve. The same you can say for Elon Musk. Elon Musk made money from his first, first, first uh, invention, sold it. I, I can't remember how much he made. Was it 200 million? And he used only 2 million for himself. He invested the, the entire money that was left into his next project. Today he's talking about going to the moon and going to Mars. People are laughing at him. 
by the time he starts collecting money for you to pay in billions to go to mass, you won't be laughing. He will be the one laughing. And you won't be the one laughing. So what am I saying? The technology space which you all represent, very good. It's a great place to be. It's the future. But those who are going to control the technology space are not just people who are techy, who are knowledgeable. They are people who are ideas, people who are idealistic, who are driven by passion. People who are intentional, people who are deliberate, people who know where they are going, people who are unfazed by the problems. If you are there, if you are sitting there right now and you are still complaining and say, oh, when, uh, we don't have NEPA, uh, we don't have money, or we don't have um, uh, DST, um, what is this, uh, broadband, then you are in the wrong space. Because the reason why God gave you this thing between your two ears is to think yourself out of problems. Thank you very much. Thank you. But pretty much the summary of what he said is a Chinese adage that says the best time to do something is 20 years ago, the second best time is now. So just go ahead and do it. Mwewa. Something you said struck me, a quote. You said, uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And um, so I, w I was thinking, the first thing that came to my mind as your presentation was going was, you're talking about our ideas, you know, what's the importance of ideas. And when I look at um, your generation, which is the generation of my, my, my parents. Our <laughs> generation, you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> Are you guys disputing that this guy, is he not older than me? <laughs> so we hear stories of all the, the ingenuity. So for example, you look at, uh, you hear about the Biafra War, uh, you hear about how, um, um, the Biafrans were building my, um, tanks and all of that from nothing. And I can't help but wonder, um, where did our generation, okay, you say you're, <laughs> now, now you're going to separate yourself from <laughs> Where did our whole generation get it wrong? I, I think we got it wrong because we thought that um, we, were, we were misled to believe that education is beat and everything that we need it will, education will supply. That is not true. Education is supposed to set you up for success with your own two hands. Uh, yeah. There are some of us who are wired to work within establishments, but not all of us are so uh, wired. There are some of us who are wired to produce I am sure that somebody like Wale, you can't keep him up, you can't keep him in an office. Even at tech point, you can't keep him in an office. Because the guy is all over the place. New ideas are coming to him. And many of you are in that space. You have zillions of ideas. But please stop making excuses. I think that's where we got it wrong. We we have this torrent of ideas. And we are saying, oh, it can't work because, it can't work because, it can't work because until you stop making excuses, you are going to die with your ideas. Sorry to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, okay, that's a very interesting point. But don't you think perhaps the environment uh, uh, is one factor? And then um, there's a theory I, I've heard around where, for, good thing we had um, Cynthia here earlier talking about uh, native learning in the native language and the fact that English has somehow replaced, uh, I mean we train kids now with English language right? even I, I was trained with English language something that I regret and even, uh, but the, the fact is the theory is that maybe because we don't think we are not trained in our native language maybe that's why we are not having enough ideas is that, do you agree with that? Mm, yes and no um, first of all first of all all the problems we have in Nigeria, they are opportunities. Are they not? Every problem we have in Nigeria is an opportunity. 
It's an opportunity to make money. Our traffic is an opportunity to make money. Not having... A, today is a public holiday in Nigeria. A lot of people are going to be wandering around uh, hotels just for something to do. Can you imagine if we had a blessing and the team um, create something and somebody is creating a water park around them and uh, all these small shops we have outside, they are there, there is music. You have a tourist destination already and people are coming and buying. We are not thinking. The problems are there. The, the, for us to move from the problem state to the El Dorado that we want, somebody has to think through those problems and stop giving excuses. Thank you, sir. I'm going to take one question from the audience, just one. But before that, I, I understand that uh, you sort of went back to school. <laughs> you are back in school kind of recently. I am, uh, a, lifelong, I am <laughs> a lifelong student. That is why I'm insisting that I'm in your generation. <laughs> But the guy doesn't believe me. <laughs> I am a lifelong student. I teach in a, in a university, but that's, that's uh, an opportunity for me to learn. Because when I'm researching um, to, 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 to teach my students, um, then I have to learn. I have to know it better than them. Uh, you, you, for me to prepare this, I had to go back and, and research and learn. So I don't take anything for granted. I am a lifelong student. And because I am not satisfied with knowledge, I want to move into the ideas, into the idea stage of imagination where I can, I can zoom off and leave some of you behind. <laughs> so one question, please. Just one. Just one. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Saomi Ayobami. My question is, if you have, like, if you're a technical person, like a web developer or a web designer, but you have other ideas outside your field or outside your skills, you have already gotten like, like I'm talking about myself actually, I've already gotten like... A question please, an like, epistle. Yes, it's, it's a question. Like you have already gotten like five, um, five, five ideas set up. Like how are you going to know the best one for you outside your skills? Good question. Well, there's something they call collaboration. And sometimes there's, there's something they call collaborative thinking, uh, where you test your ideas. Now, when I say test your idea, there, are, there is a danger in sharing your, some of your ideas because uh, they can run away with somebody else. So you have to be sure that the people you are collaborating with in thinking through your ideas are people who you can trust and who will add value to what you are saying. So the, the, the um, much as I imagination is better than uh, knowledge, uh, if you are hugging some ideas, but you are not moving forward, you need a small team of like-minded thinkers around you that you can share those ideas with and they can help you think through to determine whether, um, whether those ideas are the kinds that can fly or not. Uh, it's good. Technology uh, space is about collaboration. You know, nobody can do one thing and, and succeed. You need a team, always need a team around you. Even in the field of ideas and thinking, you need a strong, uh, um, honest, uh, trustworthy team around you. Um, let's appreciate Dr. Richard Ikebe. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, sir.